risk of being concerned with the supply of a Class A drug. That story also on the Sun's front page, which reports the charges follow the Sun on Sunday's undercover investigation. And finally, the Star claims storm-battered Britain could be in for what it calls another mauling over the Christmas period with a 180 mile an hour killer Christmas wind. I don't brackets. See what it adds in brackets, and we don't mean the Brussels sprouts. Yeah, I did actually see boom, that. Boom. <laughs> uh, I think the I think the key the key word was could. Could which, yeah. Which means not. Do you, do you ever <laughs> remember 180 mile an hour winds in? It doesn't in exist. No, not even no. when he's eating Brussels sprouts. No. <gasps> Imagine. Yeah. I know you don't want to think of it either. <laughs> no. um, yeah. Let's just take a look at the time, shall we? Just quickly. Uh, it's a massive event tomorrow, isn't there, in Soweto, in uh, South Africa. The world heads to Mandela Memorial, mm. not least uh, a large contingent from the UK, if you take yeah. a look inside the Times. Cameron, down the Clegg, bottom, yeah. Miliband, Major, uh, Blair, Brown. Blair's mm. making his own way there, probably on a private ship, I imagine, because he's already in Africa yeah. um, to do some charity work for once, mm. not relying on his own large fortune. But this uh, story's about the taxpayers yeah. picking up the bill. Does that matter? Is that well, actually, I would be surprised if they didn't, actually. The Prime Minister and the former Prime Minister representing Britain, they all had an input yeah. into negotiations uh, with the ANC, and uh, I think it's right that we're sending them out. Because what are we going to do, send them in Africa? How, I mean, uh, how, how, how else could it be paid for? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Uh, you would expect and, you'd, and they're going yeah. with their security contingent, too. Mm -hmm. You'd, expect, you'd the expect the Prime Minister and the Deputy Prime Minister to be paid for, and, and be possibly even the leader of the opposition if he's going on official business, mm -hmm. not if he's taking his wife for years, you might expect her to pay. But I'm, you know, I'd be more concerned she about uh, Ed Cameron's last uh, paid-for trip to South Africa when he went in 89 during the apartheid era and Mandela was in prison, languishing there, and he was paid to go and have a jolly in apartheid South Africa, and he's not yet apologised for it. Missed it today, didn't mention it, didn't explain it but away. But was he a politician at the time? No. Yes, he was working for the Conservative Research Department. And at the time, it's said by his travelling companion, he thought uh, the ANC Nelson Mandela was a terrorist. Well, now, you can change your mind, and it's good, and we should welcome that. And, of course, Nelson Mandela himself forgave a lot of people and always liked it when they kept on changing their mind. But you should have a little mini Truth and Reconciliation Commission. And all those who now praise Nelson Mandela and say what a marvellous man he was, let's just remember what some of them were saying in the 80s. And Peter Hayne made a very good point in an excellent speech. He was a great anti-apartheid mm. campaigner in the early 70s when he was a li uh, liberal at the time. And he made the point that, look, some people were complicit in Britain in, uh, in, in apartheid and, and sustained it and kept it going. Your, your hero, Margaret Thatcher, you have your little shrine to her in oh your house. Dear. Let's not forget, she Same called the ANC terrorists, opposed sanctions, and that sustained that regime for longer and than one of the might first, have lasted. And one of the first people Mandela wanted to see when he came out was Mrs. Thatcher, because he said she was an enemy of apartheid. Robin Renwick, who was ambassador from South Africa at the time of uh, Mandela's release, was very oh eloquent yeah. and articulate in an article he wrote in the Sunday papers describing how in the 1990s uh, uh, and even in the late 80s, he was consistently saying, Thatcher, to uh, Peter, you broke her, you've got to get Mandela out, and she was had strong links the whole way through. So I think her role, and, and when she talks so about the ANC being, being a terrorist her organization. She was heroic. Hang on. It was free Nelson Mandela with Margaret Thatcher. ANC did terrorist activities. Uh, Winnie Mandela and, and the, 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 bur the tires, the burning necklaces, which were placed around people they didn't approve of, the young man who was murdered, they were a terrorist organization. Thatcher never called Nelson Mandela a terrorist. That's a myth deliberately propagated by Maguire. And she, call, she called the ANC they terrorists, and well, no, by extension, she meant Thatcher. No, no. As, as, those meant young, Mandela. as those young Tories went around saying, hang Nelson Mandela. Now, let's not rewrite history, Andrew. I'm, I'm glad you've changed and seen the light, and you now come to praise Mandela, but let's not forget <coughs> all those right-wingers, all know. those right-wingers you hang around, well, not all of them, most of those right-wingers you hang around with had no sympathy for him back then. But this, this, you, you have to accept, don't you, that perhaps the anti-apartheid movement was more closely associated with sure. the left. Yeah. And actually, yeah. it really does shine yeah. the light on what you do with terrorists turned politicians, yeah. turned the good people, you know, same as in, in Northern Ireland, perhaps, same as other countries yeah. now. It, it does shine the light on how you deal with the, yeah. these organizations and these people. But the liberation movement in South Africa didn't start out violent. It was because mm. of the oppression of the white police, which, of course, you had to strike back. Or otherwise, you got killed, uh, killed yourself. You saw what happened at Sharpton. I think it was 69. Mm. People were just gunned down in, in cold blood. That's why. 
if it was the way it, the way it was. But let's just let's let's not rewrite history. No, no I'm just saying, right. Kevin. It's it's too easily said. I've read a million times by lefties foaming at the mouth about Thatcher that she called Nelson Mandela terrorist. She didn't, no, the and AMC. she was quite right to say the AMC was guilty of terrorist activity because mm. it was. Uh, in the meantime, looking it ahead was. to tomorrow's and disgraceful you can't rewrite that no, part no, no, of history no, no, either, Kevin. The I AMC know. engaged let's in terrorist activity. Minute, let's, right. let's look forward to tomorrow because we've got yeah. perhaps the, yeah. the largest gathering of world leaders we've ever seen, including some very interesting combinations like President Obama and the Cuban uh, leader, Juan Castro. You've got Robert and Mugabe. And Mugabe. Yeah, and, and the British leader. You've got Brazil, who's complaining to yeah. Obama about surveillance. Imagine the seating plan arrangements. Well, what a diplomatic nightmare that will be. Exactly. Yeah, but not, not to mention getting those thousands of people yeah. into this well, well, that's right. In a, in a way, the, the attention will be on the big names who, who go, but it really is about ordinary South Africans who, who revered uh, Mandela, and he played his role, a crucial role, in actually securing uh, d democracy. Not entirely gone well, and there's been big failings on the economy since, and how far has life improved but, but why, for those ordinary but why, South Africans. But why him? Why are all these people going for him? Because I think he, he was a symbol of the struggle, and when he came out of prison after, what is it, 20, 20, 28, 29 years, it had been so easy to have been bitter and twisted. He was an incredible, incredibly generous and, uh, and forgiving and